Welcome back to Connected Rheumatology. I'm Dr. Elizabeth Ortiz. Here at Connected Rheumatology, we talk about all things rheumatology, immunology, diet and movement, and mental health and wellness because we believe it is all connected. If that sounds like something you're interested in, make sure you subscribe and hit the like button. So we are continuing our rheumatoid arthritis extravaganza. So let's just keep going. So we are just continuing this multi-video series talking about all the things you need to know about rheumatoid arthritis. So let's just continue. Number six, why do we get rheumatoid arthritis? Well, as with most things rheumatologic, it's complicated. Genetics most definitely plays a big role. Now, does it play a big role in every single case of rheumatoid arthritis? Probably not. In fact, most definitely not but it does play a role. If you have someone in your family with rheumatoid arthritis, then everyone else in the family has a higher risk of developing not only RA, but any other autoimmune condition. So it's important to know what your family history is. There have been many genes that have been associated with the development of rheumatoid arthritis. So there isn't just one magic gene that, that destines someone to developing it. As with most of our autoimmune conditions, the theory is if you have an individual with the right collection of genes who then gets exposed to the right trigger, then they can develop something like rheumatoid arthritis. Now, what are the right genes and what is the right trigger? We don't know and it's most likely different for every single person. Triggers could be hormones, they can be stress, infections, specifically viral infections, but we are not at the stage yet where we can identify the trigger or prevent the damage that trigger might do. But there is something that we can prevent. Smoking has over and over again been shown to be associated with the development of RA. This is both primary smoking and secondary. So that is actually something that is in your control. If you have a family member who's developed rheumatoid arthritis, I would highly, highly, highly recommend to stop smoking. Okay, number seven. Rheumatoid arthritis is a condition that when it is not treated, will progress. So what does progression mean in rheumatoid arthritis? Well, it means persistent inflammation, joint pain and swelling, and most importantly, it means irreversible joint damage. Now, this can be difficult to hear and certainly difficult to process, especially if you are someone who has not had a chronic condition, you're not used to going to the doctor and not used to taking medications. And there are certainly a lot of different lifestyle changes that can have a very big impact and we're gonna talk about those too. But as opposed to lupus, which there have a whole slew of videos talking about lupus, we talk about how lupus is a condition of flares and remissions. Rheumatoid arthritis is very different. Rheumatoid arthritis can have flares, but it doesn't really go into remission long-term without medication. Now, thankfully, we have amazing medications at our disposal now that have completely changed the game when it comes to RA. Now, there are plenty of testimonials and information on the good old interwebs exclaiming how they cured rheumatoid arthritis with various interventions. And I certainly don't take away from their experience. But I do caution that just like with lupus, the diagnosis of rheumatoid arthritis, that umbrella can encompass lots of different types of patients, lots of different flavors of rheumatoid arthritis. Not every patient with rheumatoid arthritis is the same. And patients who've experienced a cure or remission without the addition of some sort of pharmaceutical, well, in my experience, they are the exception. 
All right, number eight. So let's talk about how your doctor approaches this. What is our treatment strategy? Are we just here to throw tons of medications at you? Well, no, 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 no. We do have a strategy behind what we're doing. So the way I look at it, there are your symptoms today, your pain, your swelling, your stiffness, your fatigue, and then there is your joints and your health tomorrow. That's talking about the possibility of joint damage and also talking about that cardiovascular risk that we talked about in the previous video. It's our job, it's your rheumatologist's job to treat both. And so we have two sets of medications, two classes of medications. You have the anti-inflammatory medications. These are things like ibuprofen and naproxen and even prednisone. These are anti-inflammatory and they help you with your pain and stiffness today. But they do very little to protect your joints or protect your heart or kidneys tomorrow. And that's where our disease modifying medications come in. And we have some older medications, we have a lot of new medications, and when I say new, I'm talking about the last 20 years. These are those fancy biologics that you see commercials for. All of those medicines also help with your joint pain and swelling today, but the real benefit is that they help prevent the damage that can happen tomorrow. So controlling your rheumatoid arthritis today with a combination of anti-inflammatories and disease-modifying medications will not only help you feel good today, but will help you protect your joints and your heart in the future. Now, this is important to keep in mind because many times I know that when a patient is already on one or two or maybe even more medications, and they continue to have inflammation and the doctor recommends yet another medication or medication change or increasing the dose. Mm -hmm. Not only is it disappointing that you're still having pain and inflammation, but it can be overwhelming and who wants another medicine? And oftentimes what I hear is, I'm okay, I can handle the pain, I'm learning to deal with it or I'm used to it. And I definitely understand that point of view. Oftentimes, however, the doctor isn't just thinking about today and what you can handle. They're thinking about protecting your joints and your heart for tomorrow. And allowing persistent inflammation to just smolder is potentially inviting the risk for joint damage and heart disease later on. Now, I am not saying that there is a one-size-fits-all. In fact, there isn't a one-size-fits-all. I am just saying that these are discussions that deserve to be had. If your doctor keeps bringing up changing your medicine or moving on to a new medicine and you have felt resistant to that, I would recommend having the conversation with them. Every medical decision that's made that involves any intervention, whether it's a surgery, a procedure, or a medication, deserves a conversation about why you're doing it, what will it do for you today, and what it could potentially do for you tomorrow. Things you may want to bring up and discuss with your doctor while you're having this conversation is what other medical conditions do you have? How have you handled the medicines that you've been on so far? Have you had a lot of side effects? Have they been really difficult for you to take? These are all things that will go into the decision about how aggressive to be with changing or increasing your medication. All right, number nine. I know I've talked a lot about medications, but the lifestyle, your lifestyle does matter. And when I say lifestyle, I'm talking about all of it. I'm talking about your sleep, your diet, your movement, and your relationships and your stress level. I would just like to highlight that these tenets of our lifestyle don't live in isolation. I am well aware that there are lots of different diets and protocols really focused on what we eat and the effect it can have on our joints. And quite honestly, especially when you're talking about pro-inflammatory and anti-inflammatory foods, there may be some rationale behind it. And I have certainly seen avoiding certain foods help certain individuals. 
but diet changes alone are most likely not the best approach. And I'm not even saying, oh, you gotta have meds. No, no, no. I'm saying when focusing on lifestyle changes, focusing only on diet is most likely not the most effective approach. And I would even like to highlight the idea that if you are an individual who has a history of dieting for weight loss, for health, or for any other reason, of binging and restricting, and perhaps don't have a history of a healthy relationship with food and with your body, that starting to engage in an anti-inflammatory diet that has very strict rules, it may actually do more harm than good. And these are kinds of conversations that you can have with your doctor, you can have with a nutritionist about how best to approach it. And like I said, focusing only on diet is most likely not going to be as effective as focusing on all the other tenets. So sleep, how much are you sleeping? Are you waking up rested? Do you wake up multiple times at night? Stress management, do you have a regular stress management routine? Do you make time for that stress management routine? And then movement, it's a very common question I get. Can I exercise if I have arthritis? And my answer is always, yes, 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 please, yes. <laughs> Obviously, if you're in the midst of a flare, give yourself a break, let the flare calm down. But if you're doing well, please, yes, move. All of those things are integral in helping your immune system regulate itself, helping pain, and I have seen that when all those things are on point, someone's medication need goes down. And number 10, life with rheumatoid arthritis is going to be different, but it can still be fulfilling. As I mentioned before, unfortunately at this time, we do not have a cure for rheumatoid arthritis. It is a chronic inflammatory condition that for the most part, people need some sort of medication for the majority of their life. The new medications that have come out of that research of the last 20, 30 years have truly changed the game. Rheumatoid arthritis patients with medication can now live a life where they are not destined for disability, where we can protect their joints and their heart and brains for a lifetime. So yes, life will be different with rheumatoid arthritis. RA can serve as a reminder to take care of yourself. Our joints will let us know when we've pushed ourselves too hard, when we are stressed out, or when we need to rest. All right. So that concludes this video. It's the second part of a full month of all rheumatoid arthritis videos. We just completed the top 10 things you need to know about RA. If you missed the first video, make sure you check it out. I'll put the description, I'll put the link in the description box below. And yeah, if you like this video, make sure you hit subscribe, like with the big thumbs up. Here at Connected Rheumatology, we talk about all things rheumatology, immunology, diet and movement, mental health and wellness, because we believe it's all connected. Thanks and have a great day.